I greet you in Jesus' name. This morning our collect is led by Raphael Mdepa in the sermon by Reverend Sabelo Mtumkulu and uh, Portia Nodongala will lead us in prayers. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, your word brings healing and life. Cleanse us from one sins that we may serve you with a quiet mind. For we live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Good morning, family of St. Paul's. It's good to worship with you on this Sunday. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A few weeks ago, as we reflected on Jesus' baptism, it came out that Mark seems to have a special focus on Jesus' identity. This also seems to appear on today's Gospel reading, with a man possessed by the impure spirit saying, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But one may wonder, what's happening here? What does Jesus have anything to do with a man possessed by the demonic spirit? Here Mark narrates to us the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Jesus called his first disciples, Simon, Andrew, James, and John. He takes them with him to the synagogue in Capernaum on the Sabbath day. The synagogue is a place of worship, a place of prayer, teaching, and community gathering. And it is in this place that Jesus begins his teaching. Mark doesn't tell us what Jesus' teaching was about, but what he tells us is that Jesus' teaching was different from what people were used to. His teaching had nothing to do with the law and tradition as scribes would normally teach on, but his teaching revealed authority. Jesus' teaching is relatively free, unlike this, though that one of the scribes, Jesus presents a God of freedom and grace. His teaching reveals authority, and he teaches as one with authority. His teaching doesn't seem to confuse those in the synagogue. Instead, Mark tells us that they are amazed. They could just sense authority from his teaching. But where does Jesus get authority? He was not a scribe, a person with authority in a Jewish tradition. Neither was he a priest with authority in a Roman Judea. He was not a worldly king with military and political power. Jesus was seen as someone with no power. He did not fit in the powerful groups. The only authority Jesus has is the authority from the one who has sent him. He told with confidence that, unlike the scribes, whatever he says or whatever he does come from God's self. Mark here writes to the people who understood Jesus' situation. He's writing to the powerless and poor audience living in a country occupied, occupied by the powerful empire. To them, God's power could be manifested through the healing of the sick, the disabled, or the demonic possessed. To them, hearing of a person who can set others free from all of these was a life-saving good news to them. Hence, even Mark presents Jesus as someone with divine authority, someone who can set people free from all their hindrances who can even set people free from their demonic possessions. While Jesus is still teaching, and people are amazed and listening to his teaching, a man possessed by the impure spirit cries out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? Mind you, we are not told that Jesus said anything about the demons. But what we are told is that Jesus' teaching was different from that of the scribes. Unlike the scribes, 
he doesn't teach law. I wonder if Mark is not inviting us to draw a parallel between the man possessed by the impure spirit and the teaching of the scribes. Like the teaching of the scribes and Pharisees, the man possessed by a demon is found in the synagogue. Like the teaching of law by the scribe and Pharisees, the man seems to have enjoyed his time in the synagogue until the arrival of Jesus. I wonder if the struggle between Jesus and demons do not signify the struggle between Jesus and the scribes and the Pharisees as a group. The conflict between their social religious dimension which favors those with power over those with less power or no power, could be parallel to the demonic possession. What are the demons of today? What are those systems or practices that favors those in power over those with less power? What is it that Jesus will have dealt with today? Maybe let me think of a few. Maybe consumerism is one of them. Consumerism is a system that makes the rich feel more important and better than the working class. They can afford everything, and whatever they can afford makes them better than others. Corruption that robs the poor of their right to basic needs and enrich those in power that allows those in power to take from those without power. The environmental degradation that destroys the infrastructure, leaving those who are struggling to survive more vulnerable. Just a few weeks ago, Cyclone Eloise left a number of families in our neighboring countries homeless, without a place to sleep, without food, without clothes. Racism xenophobia, homophobia, sexist, you name them. The eggs of hatred that allows us to continue to dehumanize those who are different from us, to dehumanize our brothers and sisters based on their race, sexual preference, and nationality. Discrimination, action that perpetrates heteropatriarchal normative system. All these are the demons of today that favors those in the center and exclude those who are in the margins. And it is this system and practice that Jesus comes to destroy. It is the systems that we are called to challenge and to join Jesus in destroying. Some of them are internal. They exist within us. And unless we allow Jesus to take authority of our lives, we cannot overcome them. And some of them are external. They require us to proclaim Jesus as one with authority over them. My sisters and brothers in Christ, let us go out and reflect on our own contribution to the unjust system of this society. Let us also go out and challenge the unjust system of this society. And in so doing, we will be proclaiming the gospel of Jesus. We will be proclaiming Jesus' authority over the unclean spirit that exists within us, that exists in our society, that continue and continue each and every day to destroy our society, to destroy those we love, to destroy those with less power, to destroy the future of those who are coming after us. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you for this day and your purpose for it. As we sit in your presence, for you assure us that we two or more gather in your name, you are there. Let your peace rain down on us today as we seek you more than anything else. The scriptures remind us that the more we seek you, the more we find you. We seek your clarity and your peace. We know you are with us. Leader, 
surrendered hearts to the path of your peace. Help us to understand that we don't need full clarity to walk into the unique purpose you've laid in our lives. Lift our eyes to seek you first today and always. Shift our perspective to seek you peace above all else. In every situation, we ponder in our daily lives. Let the Holy Spirit translate your commands. Give us renewed strength and godly courage to obey you without questioning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of Christ Jesus, please hear our prayers for the human family in its happiness and in its distress. Gather us up into the reconciling fire of your love that we may be purged of all that fosters misery and inducted into everything that creates love, joy, and peace. We commend to you those who feel broken and isolated. We commend to you the hungry and homeless, those anxious or in agony. We commend to you those who through COVID-19 are shattered and in despair. We commend to you the frightened and insane, the dying and grieving. We commend to you all who love Christ and work for this his way of reconciliation, justice, compassion, and peace. May your spirit lift us from our loneliness and despair. With your forgiveness, may we work together to produce whole people who reflect your love in all our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of wonder, we wonder at our world and pause to reflect upon all that we have to be thankful for. We thank you for those who offer us love and support. We praise you for the good things in our lives, times of work and times of relaxation, the food we eat and the pleasure we take from living. May we take from the times of prayer and reflection a sense of the quality of life with you and find ourselves satisfied with all you have offered us in the life of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of life, we pray for those who are materially rich and yet find themselves spiritually poor. Here in South Africa, many enjoy a standard of living unknown on others parts of the country and yet no matter what we own we can feel empty and dissatisfied with life with your spirits prompting may those who hunger for something different discover that belongings and things may not always fill the gaps of life and instead in the life of Jesus you guide all to be fed in this pursuit of your kingdom Lord in your mercy hear our prayers. God of happiness, we pray for those who want to escape from the emptiness and pain of their lives. In their hunger to find a place of happiness, some dull the pain by harming themselves. Others simply want to be reminded that they exist and matter. As Christ's community, may we find ourselves part of your desire that all people be welcomed acknowledged and loved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of love and peace, we come to you in faith, offering you access into every area of our lives. We pray for those who are afraid to place faith at the heart of their lives. We remember those who feel that life is too busy to stop and reflect upon the wonder of the world in which we live. Those who want to love and be loved and yet are afraid that in reaching out to others, they will make themselves vulnerable. May your spirit always whisper gentle words of encouragement that invite them to sit and take time to feed of, to, of your story of love, joy, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of grace, in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, you remind us that your grace is sufficient for us, for your power is made perfect in weakness. Draw us close to yourself. May many know of your great name. 
May they hear of your works and miracles of your faithfulness. We choose again today to fix our eyes not on all the trouble that surround us, but on you alone. You remind us over and over in your word that you are always with us. You tell us not to fear and you draw us close into your presence. You're the only place we find refuge in the storms that surround us right now, Lord. You're the only place we can find peace and strength. So we ask you for your words of truth and power to strengthen us in our inner being and lift our hearts to you. Thank you, Lord, that you are victorious over every trouble and obstacle. Thank you, Lord, that you have overcome sin and death and any evil that we may face today. Lord, thank you that through these trials, you are using our lives and circumstances to make a mark on this world. And because of you, we too can have victory and we can walk strong in your peace. May your kingdom continue to transform all we know of life. Amen.